Welcome to The Buzz, I'm Addie Stafford. I'm Judy Wandu. And I'm Nick Alfano. Today we have USC professor Natali Williams in studio to talk about how he's mixing skateboarding with business. We'll have a live spoken word poetry performance by Alex Liu. And we'll be discussing the trend taking over some voting booths. Welcome back to The Buzz. Let's get started on some pop culture news you should know. To many, the arrival of the Starbucks Red Cup signals the start of the holiday season. But the cups are stirring up controversy again this year after Starbucks rolled out a new design earlier this week on a green, not red cup. Though the green cups were created as a symbol of unity, they have many customers divided. People took to Twitter to say whether they think that the cups are replacing the traditional holiday cup or if Starbucks is trying to make a political statement. The cups feature an illustration by artist Shogo Ata that depicts the faces of more than 100 people drawn in a single continuous stroke. Starbucks chairman and CEO Howard Schultz said in a statement that the cup is a reminder of our, quote, shared values and that we need to be good to each other. There is a chance that the Red Cups will be making their return later this month, as Starbucks has said that the rest of their holiday plans are still under wraps. So, all right. Honestly, I what don't do you think? think I such a big deal. Like, I, I don't makes either. The biggest deal I just want the coffee. Cups. I don't care about the cups. But I mean, people were a little upset that last year was a plain red cup. So now that there's an artist that draws on it, people are. Yeah, it, it, there's no happy medium. You can't please anybody. It's a cup. It's it's a cup. <laughs> it's a cup. <laughs> what is everybody so upset about? It's a cup. What All matters right. is what's inside of the cup. I mean, yes. I, it's a cup. <laughs> All right. Let us know what you think of the cup by commenting below or tweeting at us uh, at USC the Buzz. It's a tale as old as time, but yeah, Disney's is. Beauty and the Beast is getting a live action remake. The first stills of the movie were released in the latest issue of Entertainment Weekly, and they're just as magical as we <laughs> hoped they'd be. Here's a look at Emma Watson's Belle and Dan Stevens' Beast in the trailer and photos. Look, a girl. Yes, I can see it's a girl, you fool. What if she is the one? The images show Emma Watson in Belle's iconic yellow dress and Belle and the Beast in his library. We also get a first look at Cogsworth, Lumiere, and Mrs. Potts. I am so excited for this live action The remake. best part I of it is Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. <laughs> I know, I know. I love Emma Watson. She's going to be so great. No, I love Emma Watson. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think that, I think it'll be a good film. Honestly, like, I, I, I hope they don't mess it up because Beauty and the Beast is such a classic. I so. mean, we grew up on that, right? Yes. Did you guys watch that as kids? I mean, I, 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 used, I used to have it on, what did they, not... Video, but DVR like VC VCR? VCR. 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 I used to watch it all the time <laughs> oh on VCR. Oh my god, we're so young. <laughs> and who, who, was, who, was the, who was the mean guy in the movie? Gaston, right? That's yeah, his Gaston. name? The, all right. the he used to give me nightmares. Yeah. He used no, to give me nightmares. Mean. It's Gaston. Oh, Gaston yes. is the guy that wants Belle. Right, in the red shirt, mm. he's yeah. jacked. Coming out, I'm, I'm very excited. It'll be good. It's uh, Beauty and the Beast is hitting theaters in March of 2017. Once again, Lindsay Lohan is making headlines, and this time is for her bizarre new accent. A recent video shows the actress speaking to reporters in Athens at the opening of her new nightclub, and there's a noticeable difference in the way she speaks. Here's what the accent that sent the internet into a frenzy sounds like. So where people are scared of refugees and everything in the world, there's, there's, a, you know, there's a minimum, there's a line of where we can make happiness and show the light of every situation that is bad and make it good. <laughs> Lohan that, jokingly tweeted about the viral video saying that she wanted to call her new accent hashtag Lee Lohan. Um, in an interview with the Daily Mail, she said that the accent was a mixture of the languages she can understand and wants to learn. Not sure what this means. Honestly, I, it's, what was that a combination of? I don't really know. What I thought I heard a little bit of British, you know, her parent trap vibes. Yes. <laughs> but then there was but also. In, in her defense, she came out and she said that she's been learning a lot of different languages, like Italian, Arabic, and she already speaks French. So I guess like that combination of everything uh, kind of intertwined itself into, but I like that she's making a joke of it. That's good. It sounds, she just sounds hoarse. Like she just sounds mm -hmm. so hoarse. It's like, yeah. it's like she lost her voice, but she's trying to sound very sophisticated as if she hasn't had, you know, 10 plus years of, incredible substance abuse problems. I don't really understand what's going on yeah. here, but. But, I mean, she's learning different languages, she's doing good things. She's, she's way better than she was, so that's good. Fair enough, fair mm -hmm. enough. 
Hormonal birth control for men may soon become a reality. I never thought I would say that. A birth control shot for men exists, and researchers found it 96% effective at preventing pregnancy. The study on the contraceptive was cut short, though, after the men taking it reported negative side effects, including mood swings, acne, and altered libido, or essentially the same side effects women on birth control experience every day. I'll let you guys uh, talk this. I yeah. think it's a great thing. I'm I think it's a great it. opportunity for men to see what it's like to be on birth control. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, what do you think, Nick? Um, I'm scared for this. I I'm mean, I, no, I, I, I can't say I would want to. Uh, Test I'm, it out. I'm, I'm all, I'm all for. Uh, can't, can't handle the burden. He can't. No, do I, it. I'm all for, not, I'm all for <laughs> not having, not having pregnancies. You know, unplanned pregnancies is not a, never a good thing. But mm -hmm. I don't know if. It's just another precautionary measure. Yeah. Bumps and some good. hormonal swings. Yeah. I, guess. I, I don't know if I'm ready to. <laughs> Are you I don't, ready for that I don't thing? know if I'm ready to take on the birth control <laughs> quite yet. I don't know well, if I can we'll do have that. To see, we'll have to see what happens. All right. But. Buzz reporter Savannah Sinfield asked students on campus their opinions of male birth control. Let's take a look at what they said. And coming up, we have Judy and Eric for the latest under the radar news on low key. The responsibility of women to take birth control when guys don't have to do anything is kind of unfair. I didn't even know they had no birth control. I wish I would have known. I think it's funny that the like that girls are like, "Oh, you guys are so like this like, oh, we go through it all the time." So it's like, "Oh, well, use condoms." <laughs> it's kind of to be expected the way that our science is led by male scientists. It's Acne, increased libido, like increased sex drive. What's wrong with that? All right. Would you ever use it? <laughs> if 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 my mood swings and blah 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 wasn't super wasn't super heavy, I'd use it. You know, a couple times. Men are complaining about this while women undergoing studies for female birth control have a lot more to deal with. In this situation, I would have to side with the, with the women. It's either pimples or kids. I'm you decide. Pimples. I'm taking pimples. <laughs> that was great. Pimples or kids. <laughs> yes, hashtag pimples or kids. These I think the option. Right. Well, welcome to the show that gives you more tea than Lipton. That's right. Welcome to Low Key. I'm your host, Judy Wandu. And I'm Eric Russell. So Lil Wayne is under heavy fire, like 4th of July grill fire, mm. after his Nightline interview aired where he was asked about his opinion on the Black Lives Matter movement. And Lil Wayne had this to say. Let's take a look. I am a young, black, rich If that don't let you know that America understand black matter these days, I don't know what it is. Don't come at me with that dumb man. My life matter, especially to my do you separate yourself from it? I don't feel connected to a damn thing that ain't got nothing to do with me. Ooh, see, I appreciate the reporter's subtle, subtle shade. <laughs> she was just like, okay, honestly. <laughs> honestly, I'm getting paid a good amount of money to do this interview, so I'm just going to continue my professionalism. Oh, goodness. Okay, so we got some Twitter reactions here. So at Mashi Kasher said, to be fair, Lil Wayne, it was a pretty impressive answer for a human bottle of cough syrup. Oh, that is true. That dirty Sprite, Wayne. I don't know what's going on As here. As you know, Lil Wayne speaks heavily about mixing uh, cough syrup and whatever he's drinking in his mm. cup. And what's in his cup is in his cup, as he likes to say. Mm. What else? What else is Twitter saying? Let's see. You know why hashtag Lil Wayne can say that? Because he doesn't need us. So if you don't need us, we don't need you. The real D.L. Hughley. Oh, D.L. Hughley posted this? Wow. I had no idea. Is that, is that D.L. Hughley? Yes. This oh, is wow. from his show. Oh. Apparently Wayne is pissing more than just, you know, uh, his fans off. He's pissing celebrities off. What yeah. else is there? Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, what else is... It says Trump, okay, so Trump is running for president. Lil Wayne doesn't know what racism is. It's 80 degrees in November. Everyone is pregnant. What is this? <laughs> Everyone is pregnant, hashtag. Everyone is pregnant for some reason. Birth control or pimples. Right. Birth control or pimples. <laughs> but yeah, Lil Wayne is really, this is what you're doing, Lil Wayne. I think there's one more. Can we see this last one? Lil Wayne was pro-black when New Orleans turned into Bikini Bottom, but I guess that seizure, I guess he seizured that part of his life away. So Lil Wayne apparently deals with seizures, and a lot of people on social media keep throwing this in his face, and now that he said this, people are really showing, it's no holds barred, like everyone is talking about People are ripping him to shreds. They are not happy at all. But the 34-year-old rapper wasn't done just yet. He then went on to say, I don't feel connected to a damn thing that ain't got nothing to do with me. Then he added that he was young, black, and rich. Following up with, 
My life matters, especially to my bleeps. Exactly. I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in August during his performance at the title concert, Wayne screamed out, we are black America. Mm -hmm. Black lives matter. Clothes don't matter. Okay. Cars don't matter. Oh. Nothing else matters because black lives matter. But then... Wayne, what are you what's talking going about? On? You are such a confused little man. You take too many halls to the Sprite because everything you say makes no type of sense. So now, according to TMZ, Wayne decided to backtrack on Wednesday, apologizing mm -hmm. for to anyone that he may have offended with his Nightline interview. Yeah, he said that the lovely reporter there with the wonderful subtle shade actually asked him some questions about his daughter being labeled a bleep and a hoe. And he said he got agitated. And from there, there was no thought put into her questions and his responses at that point. But I mean, fans are really not trying to hear it. What is he doing now? Because he's promoting something. That's why he was on Nightline originally. Yeah, see, the interesting thing is that he's actually promoting his new biography, Gone Till November, A Journal of Rikers Island, which is going to detail his eight-month, you know, time in Rikers Island prison, um, you know, when he was arrested in 2010 for uh, weapons. Wayne, so. don't do Gone Till November. Just go away. Because this right here, unacceptable. You, your dreads, all of it is wrong. Just go and get some clear eyes. Like, mm -mm. Yes, some eye drops would be yeah, fantastic. Yeah, your eyes crazy, like, bad. But next, Nick Alfano will be breaking down politics on the run up. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our last Buzz episode before a new president is elected. God, that is a scary, scary thought. But you know what's even scarier? Fake news. Yes, I know. It's a sad day when you finally realize that not everything your friend from the seventh grade shares on Facebook is true. The problem with this fake news is that television personalities are just as guilty of propagating the unreliable information. I'm talking about you, Sean Hannity. Hannity had to tweet a correction after his live radio broadcast the other day, where he told his audience that both Barack and Michelle Obama, along with Senator uh, from Massachusetts Elizabeth Warren, were deleting their own supportive tweets in wake of uh, the continued FBI investigation of Hillary Clinton. Hannity went as far as saying Obama's implicated. You know what his legacy might be? Jail. Let me be clear. None of this is remotely factual. None of it, none of it, none of it. But it doesn't end with rogue on-air talent either. Entire websites and organizations exist for the sole purpose of providing this fake news. And of course, the election cycle makes the lies that much worse. One website called Empire News produced a headline accusing Hillary Clinton supporters of being too embarrassed to support Donald Trump, while ABC News, and not the real ABC News, by the way, published an article detailing how Trump has mathematically won the presidency with the support of every Amish American. I just hope you all realize how stupid that title is. Once again, neither of these stories are remotely factual, but the beauty and the curse of the social media-driven world we live in in 2016 is that when someone does have th something to say, it only takes milliseconds to get the word out. And that's what makes this election so interesting. It has turned into a complete circus because now every hermit with an IP address can comment on Clinton's emails and Donald Trump's sexcapades, play them off as truth, and make a ton of money on Facebook doing it. So please, do yourself a favor, go educate yourself, separate fact from fiction, and go out and make an informed vote. It is your American duty and obligation you have been afforded. This Tuesday is a big day. People all around the world would want to have their election day this upcoming Tuesday. So make your voice heard. That's it for the run-up this week. And next, we have Buzz reporter Charlay Moore talking to our guest live. Thank you, Nick. And welcome to the Buzz second edition of Mold Breakers. Today, I'm joined with Naftali Williams, who is defying the stereotypes of a skateboarder and college professor. Naftali is the recipient of the USC 2016 Black Alumnus Award, and he's going to first tell us why skateboarding. You're sure you play basketball, sure you're playing soccer, but there's nothing in the DNA that says that you're supposed to go out and build community. That's why skateboarding is different. It says go build community, go reimagine the world around you, and make sure that you're having fun while you're doing it. Great. So I was listening to you talk about skateboarding and how it cro uh, crosses cultures. Tell me, when did you get started in skateboarding? Uh, I've been in skateboarding now for, for a few decades. And um, I started initially because BMX is pretty expensive. And one of the best things about skateboarding is that it has a really low barrier to entry. So it's really inexpensive to get started. Um, in that time, I went from just being a regular skateboarder to starting my own skateboarding camp for kids then working for the magazines as well, and then um, came, came here to USC and um, started designing the class and did my master's in public diplomacy and my 
um, undergrad here at USC as well. So I'm a Trojan for life. Right. So you mentioned that you're a two-time Trojan, uh, graduating with your bachelor's and master's, and now you're a USC professor. Yeah. And you're teaching a special course about skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how did that process, how did you come up with that idea? Well, one, I wanted to sort of change the, the idea of how academia can be really responsive to, to our students. And I know that in skateboarding, it's one of the things where Skateboarding hasn't had a long-standing relationship with, with academia. Usually skaters come on campus only to be able to skate the campus, <laughs> but not to be involved. Um, but for me, I actually worked with Gordon Stables and then some of the other um, academics at USC, and we wanted to really dissect how we can use skateboarding as a lens to look at issues of race, class, and gender, um, public diplomacy, and how to engage youth and create new programming that everyone would be excited about. Wow. And um, you, you mentioned everybody to be excited about. And I got to hang around your students, and I was in your class yesterday, and you had a special guest, Cindy Whitehead, yes. who's um, the OG of down, Dogtown. Yes. Yes. And so tell me, uh, with the Olympics talk mm -hmm. coming up and skateboarding being added, where do you see diversity growing in uh, skateboarding? Um, I think that skateboarding in Olympics is just going to be a larger platform for us to, dis to discuss all of the great things that go on. The fact that Everywhere I go in the world, I've worked in Cuba, Brazil, South Africa, and right here, right here on the campus at USC, all the skaters are the same. They're all excited and want to be part of this global culture and this global network. So just being involved in the Olympics gives us another platform for people to say, hey, there's so many great things that are going on. It's not just a sports where we're going to watch them do skateboarding, but now they learn about the culture. They learn that there's so much media and content creation that goes on, and it's a way that all these kids have one language to speak no matter where they're from in the world. Well, we would like to thank you so much for coming in today, Natalie, and being our mold breaker. We're now going to hear from Addie on Cinema Chat. Hello, and welcome to Trending Trailers, where I tell you about the hottest trailers people are buzzing about. So let's get started. First up, the trailer for 20th Century Women was released. Set in the 1980s, this film is about a single mother raising her son through a time of cultural change and rebellion. To help her raise her son, she enlists two young women, a punk artist and a provocative teenage neighbor. Check it out. I see the shapes. Having a kid seems like the hardest thing. How much you love the kid, you're just pretty much screwed. You get to see him out in the world as a person. I never will. Though the film has notable stars like Annette Bening and Elle Fanning, the movie received a C on almost every notable rating site, including IMDb. The film is set to be released on Christmas Day, but might be one to skip over the holidays. Next up, we have Sing. From the creators of Despicable Me and Secret Life of Pets, Illuminations now presents an animated musical. It is a comedy about a singing competition hosted by a koala named Buster Moon in a world where animals can walk, talk, and make music. Take a look. Everyone in the city gets a shot at being a star on my stage. Blah, blah, ah, ah, ah. My, my, my. Come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly, sugar, baby. I promised my sister I'd give Mary a normal life. The film stars Matthew McConaughey and Reese Witherspoon. A Variety Film Review called the movie a game changer, saying that Illumination is the hottest company for animation out there. I love this trailer, especially because it's a musical, so I am definitely going to see it Christmas week. Finally, we have the movie Gifted. It is about a single man raising his niece who is a math prodigy. Meanwhile, he battles his own mother for custody when she learns of her granddaughter's talent. I promised my sister I'd give Mary a normal life. I think she's got to be here. I've sat upon the set in the sun. Who's that lady in front of our door? That'll be your grandmother. Holy. It's a MacBook, darling. The film stars Chris Evans, a.k.a. Captain America, as the new father, and Jenny Slate plays his love interest. The two are dating in real life, so it should be interesting to see how their romance unfolds on screen. Gifted will be released in April of next year. Be sure to check out the buzz on Twitter, because tonight we will be live tweeting a Q&A with Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios. That's all we have for trending trailers. Now let's go over to Judy, who has a special guest in the studio. Yeah, I was saying 
So today, Alex Liu of USC spoken word and slam poetry group, Slam Scene, will be performing in studio. But first, we're gonna sit down with him to chat about using poetry to spread a message. Snaps. Thank you so much, Alex, for visiting us here at The Buzz. Given in our school education and the freedom to become what I want, you I always get to go first and inherit in head start. I am given yellow, the lighter skin brown. Given a rule book written in a language I cannot understand. So you recently starred in that viral video with your poetry group, Get Lit Words Ignite. How did you feel to see your work on Huffington Post? Um, I was absolutely ecstatic, um, and uh, it was truly a humbling experience for me. Um, I work with uh, Get Lit Words Ignite, uh, my organization that got us linked up with um, the people there to get us onto Huffington Post, and um, it was it was just really great having a lot of good feedback from people receiving the me uh, the message that we've been trying to you know get at. Um, and I feel that video um, really sparked a discussion about uh, race issues, income inequality, you know, also touching on like uh, um, some feminist issues as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in your performance at this year's Slamming Down the Stigma, um, you, you, you spoke about your culture, your Vietnamese culture, your relationship with your father and right. how this reflects in you today. Um, when did you realize you had a talent for poetry and does this conflict with your Vietnamese culture? Is this an issue? Oh, right. Um, I kind of like found this out in high school. I was always into rap, um, but I was I can always like write good lyrics and whatnot, but I could never like spit to a beat or whatnot. I was just really off tempo. And so um, in English class, we had um, <clears throat> the teacher just showed like some videos from Deaf Poetry Jam and uh, from HBO. And I just completely fell in love with the art. And since then, I've just been um, writing. And it's been like five years of writing, three years of performing and whatnot. And um, it does conflict with my um, culture a lot. Uh, my parents wanting me to, um, you know, this traditional stereotype of like Asians uh, really not speaking up about social issues, keep quiet so no one really um, questions you or will, you know, don't have any public opinion so you don't offend either side or whatnot. And so, you know, in poetry, I do have a voice. I am trying to amplify that. I'm trying to speak up for my community in that sense. Mm -hmm. And you actually have a poem called Peter Lang. Yes. And you performed that at Brave New Voices this year, and it's gotten thousands of views. Um, Peter Lang, for those of you who don't know, was an NYPD officer that had shot and killed Akai Gurley back in 2014. He was charged but avoided jail time. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to know, what inspired you to use your poetry and to use your voice to speak up about minority issues across different cultures? Um, right. Um, it was more so because... Uh, when you are a part of the poetry scene and a part of the po poetry community, you really see um, everyone's stories and the narratives of everyone there. What stories are really lacking are coming from um, Asian Americans and also Asian American allyship towards other communities of color. And that's a reflection of our culture and community as ge in general. I feel as an Asian poet that I should step up and be one of the first few who really speak on these issues and really, you know, um, you know, get the gears grinding for a, a future Asian Americans and e even other like uh, communities of color to speak up and say that it's all right to, you know, stand up for community of color that you don't associate 100% with, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And what do you hope to accomplish um, throughout your career? Um, I just like to, um, you know, be an inspiration to others the way my mentors have been to me. I want to really, uh, whoever sees my work to really um, get accustomed to it and like, yeah. Okay. All right. So. I'm, I'm That's awesome. So I'm extremely excited to say that Alex will be treating the buzz to a live performance of his spoken word poetry. So. The letter my grandpa never gave my dad. Dear son, I remember when you told me, Abba, I want to be just like you when I grow up. I gave a nervous chuckle. See, I cupped your hands in mine and I looked you in the eyes. But before I could confess, I saw the pride in those pupils. So I hinged my lips back in place just to bask in your smile a little longer, son. You know I'm not one for small talk. 
So I hope this poem can expose all the conversations I never had the chance to tell you, son. I don't think you understand what it's like to be me. Don't think you can understand the immigration pains embedded in these scars. Don't know if you can comprehend how 16 hour work days, seven days a week can take its toll on a man's heart, yet how sick days meant extinction. You don't know the affliction of waking up grateful to be alive, but afraid to keep living, yet I have no time for emotion. I've reminded you that crying was an unmanly because our tears would have drowned the family before the fishing boat would. But see, this world is too cruel and too relentless, will not lend its ear to our sacrifices. I come home from work every night, having been called fob more than father, been confused Chinese for chink. But see, we Asians didn't know enough English to speak back, so we let our bodies sign language our submission. We kept our mouths shut, our chins down, faked a smile in the face of authority. It's no wonder why white culture teases black folk that we're the model minority, but son, I did not bring you here to be me. You are too young to be your old man, and I will not allow you to pledge allegiance to the anthem of insults as I was forced to. My footsteps were never meant to be followed. They're meant to pave the roads. Your feet would never touch gravel. So please stop stepping in my shoes. I bought you new Nikes for a reason. I brought you here for a reason. So inherit my longings for a better life. Take my native tongue and speak with firecrackers in your throat and a dynasty in your walk. Keep the solstice in your eyes and grow jade for bones. Be as self-aware as you are stubborn, strict as you are supportive. Be everything I wanted but could not be. Son, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I won't be alive to teach you all these things in person. I'm sorry for making you a man sooner than you should be, but my son, you are a strong boy, and our family is a proud family, and there is a story in your smallpox scar and history in your blood. Men will try to cut you out of society, demand you go back to a broken country I bled to bring you out of. They don't know the sacrifices. It is your job to remind them. Or should we snap? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex, for coming and visiting us here at The Buzz. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> now it's time to talk politics, selfies, and Justin Timberlake. Check it out. Get out and vote. No, but, uh, you're damn straight. <laughs> don't, don't take a picture of yourself in the... <laughs> I had no idea. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pillow Talk, our weekly segment where we look at one big story happening in the entertainment world. So California is one of many states that currently has a law against taking photos inside a voting booth or polling place, but next year they will be legal. 24 other states don't have any specific laws, and some of them even encourage taking selfies as long as you use good judgment. So, all right guys, let's hear it. Good, bad, otherwise, what do we think about these selfie voting laws? I, I mean, it makes sense with social media today. It's, it's obviously something that would come up. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really see the problem with taking selfies in the, in the photo booths. Me um, either. See, I think it's actually a good thing. So younger voters seem to be a little discouraged, you know, going out into the polls. They feel like they don't resonate with either candidate. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, there's nothing that brings young people together like social media and a really <laughs> quality selfie. So I know personally I'll be taking a selfie <laughs> in the voting booth and I'll probably, you know, share like this is my first time being able to Wait, vote in a presidential But election. are you voting in California? Yeah. Okay, so v taking selfies mm -hmm. in a voting booth in California is not legal until January of 2017. Oh, so I literally can't no. take a selfie you at this Okay, so this is why. So I won't report you. So oh, okay. the argument, <laughs> yeah, we won't tell anybody, but if you post it, it could be seen. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, but the argument, <laughs> the argument against it is the fact that people think that uh, they can potentially 
buy votes, um, which I know that doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it. So basically what they think is if you're able to take a, like, a picture and bring your phone into these voting booths and take a picture of your ballot, you'll be able to potentially prove that you voted for the certain person that someone bought you to vote, to right. vote for. So that's what they were nervous about. They're nervous that it will um, allow politicians to start buying votes. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, they'll do anything, obviously. You've seen what Trump and Hillary put out on social media. Both so. of them have had their, their fair share yeah, of exactly. scandals, so I would it, say. It makes sense that they're scared about that, but the argument for is that they, um, you know, they have, they think that it's freedom of speech. They think it's the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I'm, I'm glad that they're gonna have to, you know, officially make it a law that people are allowed yeah. to do Yeah, do you think it will ultimately incentivize kids our age, you know, the whole millennial generation, like, mm -hmm say 25 and under, do you think it will incentivize that age group to go out and vote? I mean, I know Time recently released a cover that had a Photoshop picture of Hillary and Donald together mm -hmm. standing next to a sign that says, mm -hmm. the end is near. Yeah. Now, someone could interpret that, okay, well, in less than a week, mm -hmm. it's time to vote, we're gonna know who the next president of the US is. Mm -hmm. But some people also think that there's a hidden meeting there, <laughs> that basically it's doomsday, no matter which candidate is elected. And I don't know, that sentiment kind of that's what's discouraging, I think, young voters from getting out there and wanting yeah. to go. Yeah, I mean, you could also take the end is near poster as saying the end is near a woman president is is finally going to That is true. It could America. be seen in a See, positive light. A lot well. of different mm -hmm. meanings to that, for sure. But definitely think, definitely a clever a clever cover. I yeah, guess, exactly. So. It's thought-provoking. You yeah. can mean anything. I think it could be discouraging when people aren't allowed to take you know pictures when they're at the voting polls, because mm -hmm. for young people, that's that's what they love. They love to share what they're doing on social media right. all the time. So Again, younger millennials, for a lot of younger millennials, like we barely miss the cusp, you know, mm -hmm. being able to vote in the 2012 election. And this is huge. This is the first time you get to vote. I mean, if we're going to share, you know, get a pedicure, whatever we want to share. This is also something that we want to share too. Yeah, and, and yeah, maybe the end is near. Maybe we'll have a woman president by next week. That's incredible. Be I'm very excited. By, by the next Buzz episode, we shall have a new president of the United States. We'll see. It could be a woman. So it could be nervous. Trump. We will have to so see. Uh, but either way, get out there and vote. Make sure you do that. And I think that's all we have for Pillow Talk today. Follow us on Twitter at USC The Buzz and make sure to catch the show on our Facebook page. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Buzz. We'll see you next week. And happy No Shave November and Movember, everybody. Look. Can we take a selfie? Let's take the mom, only selfie mom. we can take in California. I'm <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Thanks guys.